today I'm going to look at the for loop for repetition in Python 3 and so let's go to my home page here and let's go to the schedule now this is the schedule for the fall semester you can click on any of these links it will go to the fall semester schedule now Repetition is covered over weeks three and four, and um, we're currently entering week four. Uh, the first week of week four, we're going to be looking at the for loop. Uh, we'll leave string formatting for a later date. And the second class of week four, we're going to have quiz one, which is on the topics of weeks one to week four, except for string formatting. So this week, we're going to have two labs, and these are the textbook references and we will be looking at the example programs here. So string repetition and string formatting is the web page and if we go back to on to C4 you'll see I've put that web page here and the link to the example programs. If these are the two labs we will we'll be doing in the first week. Now depending on which section you're in you'll be doing a different day, a different time. So keep an eye on your own C4 web page. A reminder that you are responsible to get your assignments uploaded on time. The deadlines are clearly shown and deadlines are not extended. So today's video I'm going to put in this location here. So I'll put a video here for the for loop. And uh, the remainder of the links you should keep an eye on. Uh, Okay, so let's go to the repetition web page, and here it is. Now, this web page includes the while loop, which we've already tackled. Now we're going to look at the for loop, and we'll save these for later. So section 5.2, you're going to need to scroll down a little bit to get to section 5.2, and it's just before halfway down the page. And this is our first program that looks at the for loop. So we're looking at programs 05-08.py to 05-11.py. Now if you want to look at those programs in the example programs web page, click on that and then search for the program by name. So I'm going to click on this. Now on my machine, I'm using Linux right now, I press the function key F3 to give me a find in page box here uh, on a different operating system, different browser, you may be using a different button to get to search a page. So I'm going to search for 05-08 and there is my first example program that uses the for loop. Now these are just comments. So what I'm going to do is just copy these two lines. Actually, I'll copy this line as well because this comment tells you what's going to happen when this program runs. So let's copy those two lines. We'll open up um, a Python shell. Now, this is uh, the code that I used earlier. So let's create a new file and close down the old shell. And let's save this file as now I'm using Linux, so it's slightly different, but you can save to your own desktop. I'm going to save to my desktop, and I'm going to call my file, uh, let's call it 4.py as an example. So I'm going to save that one now. And there you'll see the path at the top of the, the code window. Now I'm going to paste this code into my window. And there is the for loop. Now, this is a repetition statement. The statement that will be repeated is this one. Now, this may look a little bit strange. I'll explain what, what's happening here. C is just a variable, and it's going to take on every value in the range 0 to 9. Range 10 means give me 10 numbers, and the numbers will always start at 0. So the 10 numbers that will be available with range 10 will be 0, 
all the way to 9. That gives you 10 numbers. So C will take on the first, when it first executes, C will have a value of 0, and then it prints 0. Goes back and gets the next value of C, which will be 1, then it prints 1. Then it goes back to get the next value of C, which will be 2, so it prints 2. And it continues until it gets to the last number, which in this case is 9. So, if I run this code, you'll see what happens. There we can see, let me see the code window, let me see if I can find, there it is. So let's run it in a clean shell, run again. And there we can see the numbers 0 all the way through to 9. So this is just a comment reminding you on how this program runs. Now you'll notice here there's a space between the range and the brackets and the print and the brackets. That's not necessary, you can take that space out. It's probably a little bit neater there. So let's close the old shell and run again. And there it is, the numbers 0 through to 9. Now what if we want the numbers from 0 to 8? Well, all we need to do now is say we want the numbers 0 to 8, we change this to a 9, and then it would go through to the numbers 0 to 8. So range 9 will give you 9 numbers, and all the numbers will always start at 0 unless you, you specify otherwise. So the numbers that will be given will be the 9 numbers going from 0 through to 8. So let's run that one. 0 to 8 and those are nine numbers there all right so say we want to have uh, start at the number one and then count to ten then in this case we have to give a start number which would be one then you put a comma and now if you want to go to eleven you have to sorry if you want to go to the number of ten you have to type in a number that's one larger than ten which is eleven so this will start, if we have a range starting at 1, going to 1 less than that number. So we will see the numbers 1 all the way through to 10 in this case. So 1, 11, the 1 is the start number, so it will start at 1. It will end at 1 less than that number. So in this case, 1 less than 11 is 10. So let's run. And there we go from 1 to 10, which is great. Well, say we want to go from uh, 20 to 30. So we'd start at 20, and if we want to go to 30, we have to put 31 there. So 20, 31 will give us the numbers going from 20 through to 30. So let's look at this. 20 to 30, which is great. So there's our output, there's our program. This is just a comment. So this one for statement, now notice we have got, it starts with the keyword for, and we're taking, we can have any variable name there. And this variable will take on all the numbers going from the range 20 to 30 in this case. And so range 20, 31 will give you a range of numbers from 20 to 30. Then each time it repeats, it will take each of those numbers in turn. So this is the statement I want to repeat. Now let's make it go back to... Let's count from 1 to 4. So if you say 1, 5, it will go through from 1 to the number 4. So let's close the old shell. That's the old program. So let's run this again. So this will go from 1 to the number 4. And there we go. So what if we wanted to print something else? So underneath this, I'm going to say print the 
multiplied by 2. And so let's see what happens now. And let me just close that and run again. And now you can see that it's printing 1. And then 1 times 2 is 2. Then it goes back to get the next number, which is 2, prints that. And then 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 gets the number 3, 3 times 2 is 6, gets the number 4, which is the last number, and 4 times 2 is 8. Now if we wanted to do, let's just check that again, so what happened there? C went through all the numbers 1 to 4. Now when it took the number 1, it prints the number 1, and then it prints 1 times 2, which is 2. So there it prints 1, it prints 2. Then C takes on the next number in the range, which will be 2. So it prints 2 and prints 2 times 2, which is 4. The last value of C will be 4. So 4 and 4 times 2 is 8. Now if we want to, we can put all of that on the same line. Let's close the old shell. So say I wanted to print on the same line, I'd then just put a comma here and put C times 2. Now normally we do put a space between the operands and the operator. So let's delete that and so let's run this again. So here I've just made it a little bit neater by putting the output just all, all on one line there. So now when we run this, you can see it looks like this. So what we've done with just two lines here, we've actually printed out eight numbers. Uh, range one, four, 1, 5 will give you the numbers 1 through to 4. Once you've got those values, you can use them within the for loop. Now if you wanted to print something else underneath or do any other statement, you would just simply type whatever you wish to print in a direct straight line under the, the first line. So for every value of C, this line is executed and this line. You'll see what happens there when I run. This is the old run here. Now it's going to restart now and show you the new run. And there it is. So it's 1, 2, and. C gets a value of 2, so it's 2, 4, and. Gets a value of 3, 3, 4, and. Sorry, 3, 6, and. And then takes a value of 4, which is the last number. So it will print 4, 8, and. And then it's finished. Now if we put something here, this will not be repeated. So print, let's say, program resumes here. But this line is not repeated. The only lines that are repeated, those here. Now let's run. And there it is, looks exactly the same, except this line is executed only one time, it's not repeated. If you want to repeat this line, then you have to put this print directly underneath this print, which we don't really need to do right now. Now this is called indentation, where these spaces should not be deleted. These are actually automatically supplied when you press the Enter key. I'm going to press the Enter key now, and you'll see that the cursor is flashing directly underneath the last statement. So Python is assuming you want to do another statement directly underneath which will be repeated. If you don't want to repeat then you can just go back to the start of the line and do your statement which will be a statement that is not repeated that will be executed after the end of this loop. Right, now I do have a web page that talks about indentation. Let me go to my home page here. Let's go to my home page 
and let's search for indentation and so let's have a search here now here is my page on spaces and indentation in python programs so let's have a look at that one now this page i'm going to give you uh, i'll copy that and i'll put it in the program that i'm just running uh, if i can find my program there it is so this is the page that talks about Python spaces and indentation. Now, if you you can just search for indentation on my homepage. So anything that you're interested in, just type the word here and site search, and you will find it. And here is the page. So it, this does explain about spaces within a program. Now, of course, we've seen spaces indentation used with the print if statement and also with the while statement so here you can have a quick look to see how uh, spaces are used inside programs but be aware of spaces they are important in python programs so let's go back to my python code here maybe i should move that up there so i can find it and move it right to the top okay so have a look at this page, read it, uh, get used to using the Python search tool, sorry, my search site search tool here, so any word, so whether it's while or if or uh, let me see, today we're using for, just click on for and search. Right, so now we'll go back to this program, I'm going to show you something interesting now. Um, let's go back to the Python. I'm going to show you my example programs here. So you can find them through this Python link. Uh, the example programs are here. Now I'm going to search again for code 05-08. Here it is. And I've got some other examples here. These are very similar to the ones I've already shown you. But I want to show you this. Uh, we can use the continue and the break statement in the while loop, we've already seen that, and also in the for loop. Let's just run this code here. So I'm going to copy that and then I'll come back and use this one. So let's go and paste there. Now what this is going to do is going to print the values 1 all the way through to 1 less than this, which is 5. But if the value is 3, instead of printing C, continue means continue to get the next value of C. So in this case, if C has got a value of 3, it will not print it, but it will go back to get the next value of C, which is 4. Let's run. So what happened there? So C in range will go from the numbers 1 all the way through to 1 less than this, which is 5. Now in this case, it's checking to see if C is equal to 3. If C is equal to 3, it's going to continue. Now continue means go back up to the top of the loop. And in this case, it means to get the next value of C. Continue with the next value of C. So, normally, if C is 1, it will print 1. If C is 2, it will print 2. If C is 3, it doesn't print C, doesn't print the 3. It continues to get the number 4, and then prints 4, and then 5. So, continue, in the case of the for loop, means go back immediately to get your next value of C. Now... There is another alternative to using continue. We could use break. Now we've used break. Let's close this one. I don't want to confuse you here. We can always run this one again. This is program 510. Now the next statement is break. Now notice break is a keyword. It's orange, just like for, in, if, break. These are all orange, the keywords. 
range is a function print is a function now the range function is going to return is going to give you a, a range of numbers starting at one and ending at one less than this the print function will print whatever's in brackets so in this case we're going to use break with the for loop now if you remember with the while loop if Python sees a break, it will break out of the loop. It will go to the next line after the loop. It will not continue in the loop at all. It will break out. So in this case, what it's going to do, it's going to get the first value of C, which is one. Now one is not equal to three, so it ignores this. So it prints one. Then it goes back, get the next value of C, which is two. Now 2 is not equal to 3, so it ignores this and prints 2. Then it goes back to get the next value, which is 3. Now if C is 3, it breaks. Finished. So it doesn't print C, it doesn't print 3, it only prints 1 and 2. Now we'll run this. And you'll see it prints only the numbers 1 and 2. That's because when it got to 3, it, it met the break statement so the loop finished it finished completely and if there was another statement after here it will execute this statement only one time this is not repeated so let's put in and was here all right so let's run this and there you go this is not repeated because it's not indented under the for loop uh, Okay, now you can look at all these programs in the example programs. And the last thing I want to show you is also known as using a step with a for loop. So I'm going to change this program a bit. Let's go from number two to 11 in steps of two. All right, now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at the number 2 for C, end at the number 10, and I'm going to go up in steps of 2. So this 2 is known as the step. Now what's going to happen is this is going to print 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It starts at 2, it ends at 1 less than this which is 10, but the step, step means go up by two each time. So let's run. And there we go, two, four, six, eight, ten. This is not repeated because it's not a part of this for loop. It has not been indented. So let's close this. Say I want to print uh, five all the way up to... 50 in steps of 6. So we say 5 all the way up to 50 means I have to put 51 here. If I want to go up in steps of 6, I put a 6 there. So let's run this one. And here we go. So we start at 5. We're going up to a maximum of 50. And we're going up in steps of 6. So 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 plus 6 is 17. 17 plus 6 is 23, 29, 35, 41, 47. Now it did not print the next number up, which is 53, because that is bigger than the end here, which is 50. And that's it. So I'm showing you there how to use a step. So that's called a step. So just to remind you, this is the, f the start number, the end number, minus one, and the step. So let's see it again. Say I want to go, uh, let's start at three, and uh, let's have 33, so we have to put 34 there, in steps of three. And so we're going to start at three end at 33 the maximum number going up in steps of three and there it is so we start at three 
We're ending at 33 and going up in steps of three. And I think that will do for our first video on the for loop. So we've looked at the for loop for repetition and we've used the range function with the print function. We're using the continue statement, the break statement, and I've shown you how to use a step to step through values of your numbers, starting at this, ending at one less than this, going up in steps of three. So I'm going to leave it at that point now and finish this movie.